Sunday, and this is the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. That you enjoy that intro. I just came to praise the Lord. We have one special announcement. This will be our last online service until the fall. We will be back. And if you have enjoyed it, we'd like for you to continue to maybe send your comments on how you have enjoyed our online service. So hopefully we will be back in the fall. And we will encourage you to come and visit with us and have worship with us and have fellowship with us and the opportunity for a new kind of Bible study that we're looking to plan sometime in August. Also, we want to be reminded on our prayer list. Also, pray for Natalie, Natalie Rose Wilson family, my mother, the Valero family, Sheriff and Tony, Anna, Bob and Carolyn, Debbie, Patrick, Nathan, Brady and Barry and George and Jim. Let us continue to pray for Amy and Mary Ann and Kimberly and Judy and Jeff and Jim, Joe and Karen, Matt and Donna and Rose, as well as the children of the Uganda Agave School and for the life and the health of our church. And if you have a prayer request, it is good to send your prayer request to our post office box 246 Granville Federated Church. We are here. We believe that you have been with us online for some time. You are part of our family and we would love to enjoy to keep you connected uh, with us in our prayers as we continue to pray for you as we continue to lift you up, for you are indeed part of Granville Federated Church. This church believes in prayer, and we need prayer in these days. Let us lift God in prayer. Father of heights and depth, the Father of justice and hope, the creator of all things, we come this morning on this special Sunday, July 4th, in which our nation celebrates its independence. We come most of all to acknowledge the great I am, that you are the God of all things in our lives. We ask for your blessings today on the names in which we have called. Names that we cannot name, but names that are in our heart, as well as those who are present today. Keep us connected to you, O oh Lord. Continue to give us guidance and protect us, for we are a people of prayer. Keep us close. Protect us against the evil days in which we have experienced in this nation. Lord, your people are faithful. Teach us your way. And in the words in which you taught your disciples to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, how would be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our song for today, this is my song.
Our scripture for this morning is actually two scriptures, but the text this morning is Mark the sixth chapter, verse seven, which comes from the lectionary reading. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. In the Old Testament scripture, Ezekiel chapter 2, it says these words. Verse 4 says, I am sending you to them and you shall say to them, Thus said the Lord God, whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. Today as we look at this text in Mark, once again, Jesus, as I mentioned, the circuit rider, as he began to take his way and move within the circle of influence. He tells the disciples, okay, it's time. Now it's time to go. What is this time to go? Jesus and the disciples are on the move. He left that place and came to a hometown and his disciples followed him. And on that Sabbath, he began to preach, teach in the synagogue. And many who heard him were astonished as if they had never heard the language of the gospel. They said among themselves, where did this man get this, all of this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? It's in the text. What deeds of power are being done by his hands? They don't realize that it's, it's not his hands. It, it is not necessarily his power. But he has been given authority by his heavenly father to go out. And then he asked the question, is not this the carpenter? Is this the son of Mary and the brother of James, Judas and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? You know how it is when someone goes off and they come back to the community and you wonder whether or not this is the same person, as if they're saying, is this, is this, is, is this Jesus, is this Joseph's son? As if he can't do anything. And Jesus said to them, you know, prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown and among their own and in their what? Own house. You know, a long time ago, I, I wanted to stay in Rochester, New York after finishing high school and going to college. I could never understand why I couldn't even land a job in the city I went to high school in, where I grew up at, where my mother and father raised us. All three of us, we did everything we could to stay in the town in which we worked, went to school, friends and neighbors. I couldn't even land a job. And what I discovered, what I thought, yeah, my dad was the principal, mother was a teacher. I had my dad's name, right? 
you know. But then I discovered later on, it wasn't meant for me to stay in Rochester. Sometimes God has plans for us and we don't even know why. Sometimes you have to spread your wings. Sometimes you have to go out, be sent out for a purpose. Sometimes we have to leave home to, to grow up. Sometimes we have to spread our wings when we don't want to because God has another plan for our life. Some of us can't stay home for a reason. And then they said, Jesus, this is what he said. And he could do no need of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Here's Jesus in his hometown. They recognized him, but he was rejected. So he went about among the villages teaching and continued to teach and continued to do what he needed to do, even though he was rejected. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirit. It's amazing that Jesus himself tells them it's time to come. Can you imagine the disciples leaving their hometown to follow Jesus? And yet he told them to leave everything behind. Don't bring anything with you. And they must have said, Jesus, you've got to be kidding me. You mean you want me to, to leave everything uh, leave everything around, leave everything, and follow you? And yet Jesus said these words, a prophet has no honor. No honor within his own town. Except in his hometown, among the relatives in his household. And Jesus wanted to bring them with him. And he began to commission them to, to go out and to have the authority to lay hands on the sick and to help. Jesus was going around villages as a circuit rider teacher one town to another. And the twelve began to be sent out in twos and give them authority over unclean spirits. And he says, whenever you enter into a house, stay there until you leave that place. If any place does not welcome you and People refuse to listen to you. When you leave there, shake the dust off of your feet as the testimony against them. How does this text help, help us today? We cannot go back in the time of Jesus. But you and I have to recognize that the gospel is, cannot be just in one place. It cannot just only be the preacher or to only be in one place. The word has to be able to bust beyond these walls. It's time to, to go. It's time to, to move out. And Jesus wanted the word to go out. And these 12 disciples, can you imagine if we did not have these 12 disciples, if no one would talk about the gospel of Jesus, and the power of healing. What will the gospel be today? It is because of the power of Jesus that you are listening today. 
It is the power of Jesus today that we are all here today because we have been influenced by Jesus. Something has touched us. Something has given us the opportunity to be to sent out. Even as a minister, I have the gift to preach. Many of us, whatever we do, we are, we are an example of, what, of the power of Christ in our lives. Many of us may not be able to go out, but you can do something for the church. You can do something for Christ. It may be an activity. It may be something that helps someone along the way. And the reason for that is because of Christ that has also touched you. He touched these 12 disciples. They left everything behind to follow him. It's a great challenge to follow Christ. It means sometimes you not to have as many friends. So often to follow Christ, it means that you may be talked about. Sometimes to have Christ, it means that you have to walk alone, but you are not alone. Christ said, I'll be with you always until the end of the age. And one thing that we find, the prophets knew about Jesus. They knew about the, the, the gospel. They knew about the Old Testament. But they did not like the influence that he had over the people that needed him most. And the text says, and he was amazed at their unbelief. One thing that we can learn about this text is that unbelief will keep us from not doing the things that we need to do. Unbelief can keep us less motivated to help others when things around us seem to be array. Now it is time to go, as he tells them, and that the church must recognize that the church must also be part of spreading the gospel. That so often we are, we are looked at as being silent. We are looked at as being slow. We are looked at as not doing things. But we have the power of the Spirit in this spirit of the Pentecost spirit, it is the spirit that keeps us going. And it's the spirit that motivates us to continue to tell the world that Jesus is truly alive. What is the takeaway for us today? Jesus said these words. Number one, my grace is sufficient for you. What that means is that you come as you are. It doesn't mean that you need to be the best student in the Old and the New Testament. It doesn't mean that you have to pray 24 hours a day. You may not know anything, but to acknowledge that Jesus says, he said, my grace is sufficient for you, that I will redeem you, that, that no whatever state that you are in, I have the ability to give you the grace that is sufficient, that you come as you are. That he is able to, to make you turn your imperfectness into his likeness. That you come as you are. That my grace, God's grace is sufficient for you. And the second thing he says, for power is made perfect in weakness. You come with your own weakness. That when we deny ourselves, we have more power because Christ has the power and he gives us hope even in the midst of our weakness. When we say, forgive me. When we say, Lord, I can't do it, but I know that you can. That in the power of, it takes strength to say that we are weakened, that we need Christ. And then he says, I will boast all the more glad that love my weakness, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. It is not how strong you are, but being able, knowing that you are weak, but yet you are strong, because Christ is the one that has the power. I believe that when people are, are healed from the inside out, they take on the weakness and they recognize that they can't do anything. But they know that there is a power that is 
greater than themselves. We cannot do anything in this life without Christ that is in our spirit. And Paul makes it very clear when he says, I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, the calamities of the sake of Christ, that the world will, will point his finger at you. The world will kick you to the curb. The world will push you to the side. But it's in, we become strong when we are weak because it is in, in Christ that we become strong. That's why it's important in this life, in these times, in this present age, when we look out and see evil and things happening, you are to maintain that joy that Christ has given you on the inside. Many of you today continue to work. You continue to press on to the mark of a higher calling because there's something on the inside. It is the power of Christ that keeps us going. It keeps us moving. That's why Jesus says, now it's time to go. Don't give up on yourself. Continue to keep moving. Sometimes when you stop, you become a, a moving target. Sometimes when you think too far and too deep, you become a moving target for the line to get confused. But when you know that the Lord is with you, when you begin to say that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want, when you begin to know that his grace is sufficient for me in the midst of my weakness, he is with me. Pentecost means to hold on to the spirit that has not left you. Christ is with you. So the next time you feel like you can't move, you can't get started, Remember, now it's time to go. Carry the Christ of love with you. Carry the gospel, the power of Christ with you. Yes, he healed the sick, the lame, and the deaf. He can also heal the pride of our heart. He can turn our spirit around. He can give us hope. He can heal us to be better servants of God by telling people about Christ. You may be kicked to the surf, to the curb. You may be pushed. You may be pushed down, but you can still get up. Yes, Jesus is what it's all about, people. It is about Christ. Know that he is with you. He will never leave you, nor forsake you. And know that no matter what happens, he is your Lord and Savior. Amen. Our song for this morning, O oh God, our help in ages past.
let us discern this moment. We remember that on that night, Jesus took bread and gave you thanks and broke the bread and gave it to the disciples saying, this is my body, which is broken for you. Go for it. 